All right, what is up guys? It is Storm back here with another video and in this one I am bringing you my list of My Hero Academia story part 14 by the Mysterious Banana. Now if you want to check this story out for yourself, the link to it will be down in the description below. But before the video begins, why don't you like, comment, and subscribe? I mean they're all free so why not? If you want some dope channel merch, the link to that will be down in the description below. And if you want to see more of me, go check out my other channels and go follow me on Twitter and Instagram which will all be linked down below. But without further ado, why don't we just dive right on in. Izuku woke up to the sound of a door opening, most likely the entrance door to the infirmary considering the fact that besides the bedroom, that was the only other door. Out the door came Todoroki, Ida, Kirishima, and a bunch of other male students, and to his conclusion, gave him a thumbs up. Next to him, Toka, sound asleep on his bed. She was on the side of it, kind of like how someone falls asleep on a desk, but this time, the desk was the bed. It didn't take long for him to piece together the puzzle. Congrats, Izuku, whispered Kirishima. You got yourself a girlfriend, whispered Mineta in a slightly jealous tone. Izuku blushed in embarrassment as he wasn't ready for another visit, especially since he just woke up. A sudden realization came to mind that made him jump. Wait, were you guys watching us sleep? Izuku whispered back. Took a picture and everything, he too looked so cute from side to side, whispered Kaminari flashing two thumbs up. Don't worry about it. I made sure no one sent out anything online without your permission. Privacy is everything after all, whispered Ida, who noticed the sudden anger that drew upon Izuku's face. Then why are you guys still here? Leave, Izuku said in a slightly louder tone. Oh, right, sorry, the guys replied, slipping away. You know, you're adorable when you're trying to act as your old self all the while trying to be aggressive, Toga said. Wait, you were awake? asked Izuku. I wanted to see how you would interact with students without breaking your character since, you know, you kind of went nuts when fighting Kotsuki, replied Toka. Oh, right, what about Kachan? Izuku asked. Suspended for a few days for attempted murder, Toga replied. Only a few days? This school is so busted, Izuku said, punching his bed, which brought him to a sudden realization. Yeah, we injected you with the temporary healing factor to make your arm heal quicker. After all, tomorrow's when we're going to be carrying out the assassination. We'll need you there, Toka explained. Oh really? Everything's already prepared? That was quick, replied Izuku. Shigaraki seemed very eager about your plan. I guess that made him work faster, Toga said. Ah, I see, Izuku said. Recovery girl came through the door as the two were chatting, handing him a tray with breakfast already made. Just then, she noticed Toka. Oh, I didn't know we had visitors. A shame, maybe I should have brought in two trays. Ah, uh, no, it's fine. I just ate, Toga explained. Quit lying, it's currently 6.15am, you would have had to make and eat breakfast, then come all the way here at 5.40 at least in record time, replied recovery girl. No, it's fine, I'll share my breakfast with her, Izuku replied. Fine, just remember class starts at 8 and seeing that you've recovered, I think it's best not to miss out, she said, putting the tray down and leaving the room. Izuku stared at the plate. There were scrambled eggs, sausages, two slices of toast, hash browns, and orange juice. He went for the fork, but Toga took it first. Before he could say anything, he noticed some eggs heading towards him. Say ah, Toga said smiling. Toga, I can do it myself, Izuku replied. I know, but I still want to do this, replied Toga. Ah, please stop, it's embarrassing, Izuku said. Ah, don't be such a baby, it's not like we're being watched or anything, replied Toga. Little did they know, the door was a sliver open, and even though one couldn't see it, they were being watched by someone no one could have seen. She's spoon-feeding him, Toru squealed. Ah, so adorable, squealed the rest of the girls that were on the other side of the wall. This is so wrong, mumbled Momo. Then why are you even here, asked Mina. I wanted to make sure Izuku was doing well. If Koski was here, I would have done the same, the student said with an embarrassed tone. Yeah, sure you will. Even if there was, we wouldn't visit him, complained Jiro. He's just so, so... Yeah, he's a dick, Ribbit, Suyu said nonchalantly. Back inside, Izuku finally gave in and had himself a mouthful of eggs. He thanked the cook in his mind as Toga then took one of the sausages. You know, I'm a big fan of sausages, Toga commented. Don't mind if I take this one. Yeah, go ahead, replied Izuku. That was a mistake on his part, as instead of biting into the meat like anyone would do, she started to do many sexually explicit things with said sausage and with her mouth. Watching this happen gave Toru a nosebleed as she nearly passed out from excitement and had to be dragged back by the others watching. Toru, what happened? asked Momo. We need to leave, Toru replied. They deserve some 
privacy. Meanwhile, Izuku was trying his best not to get infatuated by what he was seeing, nervously munching on some toast. Okay, she's almost done with her sausage, as long as there are no more suspiciously shaped foods lying around, I should be. Ah oh, shit, Izuku thought as he noticed a fruit bowl sitting next to the tray with a banana, some strawberries, and cherries. Knowing she'd go for the bananas next, he quickly grabbed it, peeled in, and ate it in less than three seconds. Alright, I eliminated the only remaining suspicious looking object on the tray. Now, I can breathe easy, Izuku said. Geez, you really love bananas, don't you, Izuku? Toga asked, reaching for the fruit bowl. Personally, I prefer the cherries. Cherries? What can she do with cherries? Izuku asked. Suddenly, a mixture of awe and arousal hit Izuku as she, as if defying physics itself, was able to rapidly lick and balance both cherries on the tip of her tongue, flinging them around as she once again looked at Izuku with the same lustful eyes. She made a sound uh, while she was licking the pair of cherries. I knew able to say another word, but she didn't need to. She could tell this was working. I, uh, I, I gotta go, Izuku said, slowly getting out of bed. Togo bit into bold cherries, spitting out a pit, and walked up to Izuku, who seemed to be in a hurry. Hold on, you have some crumbs in your face, she said. Let me take care of that for you. A shiver ran down Izuku's spine as he felt a warm tongue streak across his face, looking off the bits of toast that was stuck onto his cheek. Alright, Toga, I get it. You really like me, but can we do this somewhere else? This is a school, for God's sake, asked Izuku, quivering from the intensity. Oh, what's wrong? You can take on Kotsky, yet this is too much for you, asked Toga. Meanwhile, on the outside, Ochako came to visit Izuku, but was already confused why all the girls in her class were clumped up at the door, like guys peeping into a girl's locker room. All of a sudden, she could hear one of them murmur, Come on, kiss already, and came running towards the door. What's going on here? Ochako yelled. The rest of the girls shot up in fear as they quickly closed the door. Ochako, uh, uh, hi, maybe now is not the time to visit Izuku. Maybe come back tomorrow, Momo said, as she and the rest of the girls blocked the door, making it clear that there is something they didn't want Ochako to see. Let me through, Ochako said, activating her quirk and making all the girls float to the ceiling. Quickly running to the door, Izuku and Toga's intimate moment was broken from the sound of Toru yelling, Izuku, hide her! Before he could register who that was, Ochako came barging through the door to see Izuku, nothing but his briefs, getting cuddled from behind by a girl she had never met. Izuku, who's... who's that? Ochako asked, trembling. Oh, uh, 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 why, why are you here? I was just leaving, in fact, Izuku said, hinting at Toga that this was her cue to leave. As Toga left the room, Ochako and Izuku stared awkwardly at each other in silence. Izuku didn't know what to say, but he knew what she was thinking. Izuku. Here it comes, Izuku thought, bracing for a slap. You could have told me you had a girlfriend, Ochako said in an embarrassed tone. Wait, you're not mad or jealous? Izuku asked, confused at her sudden approach. Me? Je jealous? How come? I mean, I like you and everything, and I don't mind being your girlfriend either, but I just didn't know you were dating someone else. I mean, we've known each other hardly for a week, Ochako explained. Izuku wiped off the cold sweat from his forehead. Knowing that she wasn't that kind of girl, it would have caused him a lot of trouble, especially in his future plans. Anyhow, knowing this, Izuku was able to build up the courage to change the subject. Hey, I know everyone's been pawning the attention on me, beating Kotsky and all, but you did good too, Izuku said. Ochako let out a nervous giggle. <laughs> uh, thanks, she said. Anyways, if you have nothing left to say, maybe you leave me to do my things. I still haven't gotten dressed, you know, and I don't think I'm comfortable in nothing but my undies, Izuku said. Oh, right, sorry, Yochako said with embarrassment, as she quickly ran out of the room. Uh, can you let us down now? asked Mina, still stuck on the roof. Sadly, Yochako just ran past them without letting them down. Izuku, fully dressed, followed afterwards, not even noticing the girls stuck on the roof like helium balloons. Uh, help? Uh, anyone? The second Izuku came into class, he was barraged by students congratulating him. Apparently, they all saw him and Toga together, and must have put two and two together. Even Ida bowed down to him, uh, even though Izuku insisted that that wasn't necessary. Suddenly, a sleeping bag fell from the roof as Aizawa came out of it, looking groggy as ever. Okay, now class, take your seats. The teacher ordered as everyone quickly took their seats. And Izuku? Uh, yeah? Izuku asked in a nervous tone thinking that the teacher might be on to him. I heard you have a girlfriend. Congrats, Aizawa said. 
as his sleepily but intimidating face shifted to a lively one in a millisecond. You know about it too? Izuku yelled out. Of course, it's the talk of the school. You're already popular for wrecking Kotsky, and now this? You might as well be the next number one pro hero in terms of popularity, said Kirishima. Alright, enough of that. Aizawa's face turned to seriousness. Today, we have some serious business to take care of. Most of the class prayed to All Might that this wouldn't be another brutal pop quiz. We're picking a class president. Such a normal school thing, thought most of the class. Suddenly, everyone was on top of each other's heads, trying to be the class president. From the back of the classroom, Ida spoke up. Leading the many is a task of heavy responsibility, but ambition does not equate ability. His sacred office demands the trust of its constitution, if I were to, so basically you wanted us to vote for the class president. Got it, Izuku said, cutting Ida off. Hey, I wasn't finished, Ida said. Izuku stood up from his seat looking at Ida with a sincere attitude. Democracy may be a good solution, but sometimes votes can be a faculty system, like times when everyone's a candidate. Do you really think one would just use his vote on someone else instead of himself? No. Votes are only possible when only a few candidates are available compared to the number of voters. In other words, if we were to vote, there would be need for only two candidates to prevent heavy self-bias. In other words, what I suggest isn't a campaign to determine who would be the class president, as that would take way too long and eat up our time, Izuku explained before turning to Aizawa. So I'd suggest we simulate an evacuation drill, and see out of all of us who is the most composed cooperative, patient, and calm. The class went silent to Izuku's statement. Frankly, I'm not that serious about such an event. So, sorry, no simulation, replied Aizawa. Hey, but Izuku's got the better idea. Maybe he should be the class president, said Saro. Yeah, I mean, he seems calm, composed. Even Aizawa couldn't phase him. And he even convinced the teacher to exempt him from the elimination test, commented Momo. Then it's decided. Izuku will be our class president, cheered Ochako. A drop of sweat ran down Izuku's neck. Wow, that was easy, he said to himself. Later that day, the hideout seemed a little more crowded than Izuku remembered. Walking up to Kurogiri, he asked for the usual and scanned the room for Toga to return the favor. Out of the corner of his eye, however, he saw two familiar figures return. Yo, Izu bro, called out a familiar voice. Hey, Sachi, Irina, how's it been? asked Izuku. I heard you were planning an attack on UA, Irina said. You can't just do that and not call me. Hey, I specifically asked for only Toga, a no moon, a lot of fodders. And I knew that putting you two in the fodder category would be too damaging for your pride, Irina, explained Izuku. Irina slammed both her hands on the table. Hey, punk, call me a fodder one more time and see what happens, Irina said with a pissed off tone. See? Point proven, Izuku said with a smug look on his face. He's got a point, you know. You really do have an inferiority complex with everyone. Or was it in a soup? superiority complex. I don't know. I'm not good with these complex figures of speech, replied Sachi. Suddenly, Irina grabbed Izuku by the neck. Remember when you put that knife to my neck? I heard you just lost your quirk. Payback time, she said with a pissed off tone. As she was about to activate her quirk, suddenly, out of nowhere, a knife came flying in. As it came within an inch to the back of Irina's neck, leaving a small mark on her nape. Don't you dare do anything to my Izuku, said a pissed off Toga. Turning around, Irina turned to the short blonde and stared down upon her. Don't fuck with me, young lady. He insulted my status and now he'll pay the- Before Irina could finish, Izuku tripped her, putting her in a chokehold. Come on, you wanted payback. Go ahead, he said, making sure to completely immobilize both of her arms. As Irina tried to wrestle out the hold, Izuku just strangled her even harder, to the point where Irina's neck was turning purple. Hey, hey, watch it, you're gonna kill her, Sachi said, separating the two. Irina backed at the other end of the counter, panting heavily. You got lucky, she said, gasping for air. Izuku walked up to her and picked her up. Kneeing her in the stomach, she dropped to the ground, writhing in pain. Listen, Irina, it's about damn time you learned that you're not the top dog around here. And the only way to be the top dog here is to work for it. So start by getting rid of that obnoxious attitude, Izuku said in a bossing tone. Irina looked at him with rebellious eyes which granted her a kick to the face. The rest of the villains watched as Izuku mercilessly pounded Irina to submission as Sachi was hiding behind a table in fear. After she finally passed out, Izuku wiped the sweat off his forehead and walked back towards Toga, who was trembling in excitement. Wow, that was just... wow. Toga said, witnessing the villain side of Izuku at its full glory. Yo, Sachi, Izuku called out in a much more calm tone. 
Y yeah boss? Sachi nervously peeked out of his cover. Tell Irina when she wakes up that she'll have 15 hours to prepare for the assassination tomorrow. And tell her that if everything goes according to plan, she can be promoted to Vanguard, said Izuku, picking up Toga in his arms bridal style. Hey boss, by the way, where are you taking her? asked Sachi, pointing at the girl that looked like she was at her peak. She seemed kinda ill, so as a leader, I'll relieve her stress, Izuku said with a smile as they went upstairs. Sachi blushed at his dirty mind, knew what that could only mean, and picked up his unconscious partner. Come on, Reno, we have a big day tomorrow. However, in a room in the basement of the hideout, Shigaraki was not pleased to hear his news. What do you mean I'm no longer a viable successor? Shigaraki cried into a TV screen. It means what it means. Sorry, Tomura, but Izuku is showing much, much more promise than you. He's a better leader, tactician, analyst, and scout. He's more composed, patient, and has led operations several times more successful than anything we've ever pulled off, and has a far deeper well of potential than you. I'm sorry, but until you can prove me otherwise, my decision will be left unchanged, replied the voice on screen before the screen itself went black. Shigaraki punched the screen, making it crack, and yelled out in anger. Not a viable successor, huh? I'll show him. The day we assassinate Eraserhead, I'll be the one to kill not only him, but even All Might. Just do you wait, Shigaraki said to himself, as the TV started to rust and corrode into nothing. I stay.